Hello, hello, hello. How y'all doing today? How y'all doing today? Today we got a guest coming on. We getting everything set up right now. Y'all let me know how y'all doing in the chat. How y'all doing today? So like I said today, we got a guest coming on. She is on my new album, uh, 30 Day Notice. That's gonna release March 30th. So I'm excited for that. She's very talented, and we're just gonna get her in here. We're gonna talk to her. I'm just waiting for her to join us real quick. Again, y'all, let me know how y'all doing today. What y'all got going on today? Let me know in the chat. Let's see. Let me make sure she got the link and everything. Again, we just waiting for her to join us so we can go ahead and get started with this interview. Again, let me know how y'all doing today. Let me know what y'all got planned for today. Again, the album dropping March 30th. If y'all liking these interviews, hit that like button for me. I'm definitely going to keep this going more in the future. I'm planning on having a lot more guests on. So let me know if y'all liking this. Let me know who y'all want to see. Let me know. Yeah, I'm running a little late right now. I also got me a new microphone. I got the new Rose NT1 uh, fifth generation. I just picked that up recently. So, yes, I'm excited. So far, I think it sounds good with my voice. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it. But I'm definitely going to do a lot more testing with this. I plan on doing a lot more live streams alongside these interviews that we're doing. Let's see. Ah, uh, she just joined us. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yay, we're in business. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, Hi. thank you for joining us. I really do appreciate you joining us. Well, I appreciate you having me. So, thank you. <laughs> So, do you mind introducing yourself to everybody, letting everybody know who you are? Well, I am Tabby of Tabby and the Cats, um, and I am a local Florida pop with flavor artist is what I call it, because it's pop music, but um, I do all different kinds of beats, like I've done reggae, hip-hop, regular traditional pop, rock, I just kind of go across the board. So, I just I'm just doing music. I definitely feel you on that one because it's hard to narrow down the genre, especially when you want to do so many different genres. Because I'm in the same boat pretty much. Because I like doing rap and I like doing R and B, but I also done some pop songs before. I done did I like doing cinematic music and everything like that. So I definitely feel where you're coming from. Yeah, especially like when opportunities that are presented to you, like if you're really feeling the music you're not going to be like oh i can't do that because it's like an edm track and i'm not an edm artist or you're not going to turn it down and be like oh well i don't feature on hip-hop or rap because i'm not a hip-hop or a rap artist it's like if a beat's hot a beat's hot like it doesn't matter what genre it's in if you can write to it and you can make a good song out of it no matter what type of artist you are a hit is a hit yes i definitely feel you on that so how long have you been doing music I don't know how to block them from coming through. <laughs> you fine. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, say what you said. How long you been doing music? <sighs> oh, too long. <laughs> too 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 long. <laughs> um, I want to say like professionally and seriously, like the last five years. But developmentally, I've been developing since like maybe. Like I was introduced to singing and music in general. I, like most people have the same story. They did it in church. So like, yeah, I started in church on Sunday because mom wanted the house to herself. So she'd be like, go there. I want free time. 
And then church short service is a little boring. Um, so I just go up in the choir and hang out there. And then I found a spot for me there and I liked it. Um, and then after that, I just continued, like you get the bug, you know, like that. Yeah. That... <laughs> it consumes your soul. And then no matter where you are in life, you're always trying to gravitate towards that. So like, uh, my younger years, like early teens and stuff going into my twenties, um, I kind of did like what I call like a circuit or a studio type of tour where like I was meeting people when I was working cause I was a dancer at the time and they'd be like, Oh, why don't you just come through and just throw down some like oohs and ahs and backgrounds or do some choruses or help people. write?" So I was living in Connecticut then. So I was doing a lot of that kind of down in the city, uh, like Hartford, Bridgeport, Middletown, New Haven. And then I didn't really feel like I quite fit into that because I wasn't getting like solo opportunity. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I wasn't, and like I was going to college at the same time. So I felt like I was partying a little too much and I like wasn't focusing <laughs> on school. <laughs> <laughs> so and I'm like trying to balance like, okay, I'm, I'm working as a dancer. I'm going to school. I'm doing these studio sessions. I'm not getting paid for it, which is fine. But I was getting tons of experience. But I, I knew I needed to like move on. And then I ended up playing with a band called For the Grateful, which was a Grateful Dead cover band, <laughs> which is completely not a genre that I've ever even heard before. Like I had to spend time studying it to be able to play the keyboards for them, to yeah. be able to do the shows with them. And then uh, I graduated out of that after about a year because it just wasn't my vibe of music. Like I loved it and I loved playing, but I wasn't a strong keyboard player. Like I don't even know why they kept me on. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, you was doing something right that kept you on for so long. I, I don't know. I didn't feel like my keyboard skills were as adequate as they needed to be. These were like some really good professional musicians, but they did lack things that I didn't lack. Like I really had a good like Facebook marketing thing going on. And I was like making, I made like a big poster for us and printed it out. Like I did a lot of like that kind of work for us that kind of helped get us shows at like the American Legion and stuff. So I got experience in that realm of the world too. But I ultimately, again, kind of knew like, no, I either want to go solo or I want like a band around my sound because I knew that I had something, but I just didn't know where I was going to find it. Yeah. <laughs> like, sometimes you just don't know where life is really going to take you. Um, so shortly after that, I had actually uh, got back together, not back together in a sense, but like I had worked with another rapper out of Connecticut again because he had offered me my own song. So we had made this deal where it was like, hey, if you come in and collaborate on my songs as like a featured female, like verse, you know, do a verse and some backgrounds, I will produce your singles for an album. I was like, you got it. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's a good deal. Oh, Let's yeah. do it. So we did that for about six months and then he started getting book shows. So then I kind of stepped into like a manager role where I was like helping him like mm. with his social and then going to the shows and like I was putting up the money for it too for the travel expenses and everything and uh kind of in my mind going well I'll get it in the back end you know like I'll get it in yeah. the back end it's not a big deal <laughs> and there's no formal agreement on any of this either it's just like two people telling each other whatever they're telling each other and then we got picked up by this record label called Decor Records which was uh, a scam <laughs> and <laughs> a scam <laughs> like yeah. oh they took me <laughs> They took I, me so hard. I definitely know how that went because <laughs> we shared the same story where we was actually doing a lot of things in the music field because I actually went to uh, Full Sail. I was doing it online. Yeah. And at the time, I moved in with my girlfriend in Pennsylvania, now wife. But we was up Ooh. there, and I was also working with an independent music group at the time, plus working going to school and it was a lot on my plate and I couldn't balance all of it. So I ended up just dropping full sale because I'm like, I'm already working in the business. I'm learning more working with people that do movies and independent artists and stuff like that. I'm work, I'm learning more from the music side from them working with them than I am in school. So I was like, just dropping full sale and just strictly working with them. And we had a run in with a scammer also that also wanted to sign us and wanted to work with us and everything. And luckily did we it? did our research and we called it beforehand oh. before any paperwork was signed. 
But yes, it's scary, especially when you feel like somebody finally reaching out when you first getting started and you feel like you finally getting somewhere. But yes, I definitely know the feeling. I was so blinded by hope. Like I was like, yeah, this is it. And and you know, the crazy thing is, is they weren't signing me. They were signing uh, LV was the artist that I was working with. Um, so they, cause they saw all the work I was doing with my Facebook on promoting him and the shows that he was doing. We did WLVS radio station in Washington, which was pretty prominent at the time. And like, you know, he had some movement, so they reached out and I had thought I did my due diligence of research. And then the conversations that we had and the contracts that we did, they looked legit. And I had a entertainment lawyer look him over and the entertainment lawyer had even told me, he's like, well. It could be legit, but just be weary that it also could not be. Like, these look like they're good, but, you know, you just never really know. And I didn't heed his advice. So, uh, you know, we signed LV, and then I was the one fronting the money for everything anyway, so it didn't really impact LV in any financial means, so it was more me that got impacted. But, um, you know, they were like, oh, you know, you have to pay uh, every month for you know, an association fee, basically, and a retainer for the lawyers in case we need to have the lawyer for anything that comes up in a dispute. You don't have to pay out of pocket for it. That's what your retainer is for. And I don't know why I That's thought that ridiculous. all made sense. Yeah, I, I, I think about it and I'm like, you're an idiot woman. Like, why would that have made any sense? That's not how this world works. But I also did not really know how the music business worked. Like I've, I've never mm. had that kind of experience before, so I didn't know what to look out for. Um, so they were like, we, you know, they, they heard his songs and we sent them some demos. They were like, okay, well get us an EP and do your EPK. And I did all that. Like I paid for uh, studio time for him to get his five songs done. And then I developed and produced the entire EPK to submit. And then I had to pay for shit for that with the label too. So I did all that and they were like, oh, this looks great. And then right around that time, he started going like, I don't think this is legit. I think this is a scam. And he was right. He was right on the money. I was like, but I just paid all this money. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely hear you. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. I did not want to believe it. So we had a falling out because of that and then some personal things. So, and I don't harbor any hate towards him. I just choose not to communicate because it's just too much for me. I'm like, eh, some things are just better left to be where they were, you know? Yes, um, and that's one reason why so, I don't think I can ever be a manager on the manager role. <laughs> I've been asked to be somebody manager plenty of times. I know me mm -hmm. personally, and I know how artists are because I am an artist. I know we yeah. take everything personal. We take every we little take, thing. Like, the heart. Yeah. We're like, oh, God. Oh. <laughs> so I can just um, imagine being in a management role and you have to manage everything and you see opportunities or you see a bad opportunity, but they feel like it's a good opportunity. And you have to explain yeah. to them why it's a good or bad opportunity. But they already got their mindset on it. Like, this is what I'm going to do or this is what I'm not going to do. And as an artist, I understand because you yeah, are like, sensitive. I totally get it. <laughs> You're sensitive uh, about your music. So I definitely understand it. I don't think I could be the manager role. You know, and I felt like at that time, like he was being more managerial than I was concerning that because he was recognizing like, oh, this might be a scam. And I was kind of throwing like the artist fit going, no, this is the opportunity. <laughs> and it was just because I had so much money invested into it. And I was like, but you're going to get book shows and you'll get paid and then I'll finally get paid back. And it was crazy. So when he dropped off and I had to tell him that he dropped off, they were like, well, we had sent them a demo of something that I had done before. And they were like, well, let's focus on LV because he had traction and I didn't have any traction. They mm -hmm. were like, yeah, she sounds good, but we don't see any traction. So um, then they were like, well, you know, your demo sounded good. I think we could work on getting you some traction if you're willing to put some work in. And I was like, ooh, this is my shot. Yeah, I'm about to go fucking big because duh, stupid. And that's not how it worked. So I repaid for a demo to be cut for myself so they could have an official demo song. And then I used one of the connections out in New Haven that I had. But it was a bad call because he's a little bit of an alcoholic. And mm. even though he had really good production, or so I thought at the time he had really good production, uh, he took one of my um, takes. It was a bad take. And I know that there was good takes in there. So when he produced it, he put a bad take right at like the pinnacle of the song. Oh. And I didn't have any time left to correct it. Like the deadline was like the next day. And I'm like, oh, come on, dude. So I submitted it and they were like, well, obviously you needed more time on this, but we don't like the song anyway. So we're just going to give you a new project. I was like, 
all right <laughs> then what okay cool so they gave me another beat to write to it was called um it's what i have out i don't have it out yet i want to re put it out there but i want to re-record it because i'm picky but it's 267 on the dash and uh i wrote that re-recorded it i was down in south carolina at the time so i had a studio down there do it but you have to be careful when you're trying to pick uh producers and studios for your sound because this studio was more designed for like live bands so they're mm. they have all the equipment and all the expertise to record live band sounds and they're going to give you more of like an indie sound but the beat that they gave me was a straight hip-hop beat to write to so it needed like a hip-hop producer to produce the vocals on it to give it that hip-hop production sound gotcha so when they gave me the production it didn't sound like that so immediately the label's like no we can't work with that so then they sent me to their producer over in vegas who was just signing on to this scheme obviously he didn't know it at the time so i took my trips out to vegas to go work with natrell.com and dt702 and they were so fantastic to work with like super professional natrell just really knew his shit like he was really good with coaching me because at this time like this is the first real time I'm actually in a booth doing a full song, not just backgrounds where I go in for a few minutes at a clip and do a couple takes, like no, full song. And then I flew over and back, which has a huge effect on like how your vocals are gonna work. Yes. And these are just things because of my inexperience that I just didn't understand. So I did have a really hard time actually recording some of the songs. Like the first one I did, uh, Go Get It, which I have on my YouTube. That was easy because like I literally just that day got in and he had this beat up and it was just I just felt it and like we wrote it that day and recorded it that night so it was super fresh and it came out amazing and then open I was supposed to do that next and open came out really good but I struggled so hard recording it because I just didn't prepare myself the way I needed to even though I knew I could hit the notes and sing the song and, and do it because I practiced it. It was a whole different ball game being in the actual studio. So I, I learned a lot from that. And I love open, but I feel like I could have just done a better job on it. I still have that one up on my YouTube, even though I listen to it and I'm like, man. Huh. I feel you. And the tr yeah, <laughs> I, I, did a fantastic I, job producing it, though. So I can't take it down. Like, he did such a good job. I'm like, I, how do I... <laughs> How do I not share it? <laughs> and I'm hearing your story and I'm hearing like everything that you're going through. But I feel like you got a lot of good coaching out of the whole situation. So, yeah, oh, it was my. a scam and they didn't do it. I'm pretty sure they didn't live up to everything they said they was going to do. But I feel no, like but on the bright side, you did get a lot of good coaching. And I feel like because your vocals are amazing. I'm going to let you know that automatically. Your vocals <laughs> That's are That's years amazing. of work, baby. That's years <laughs> of work. That's development right there. <laughs> so, yeah. So when you sent me the first song, which was uh, We Got That Vibe, I yeah. was like, Ooh. even before we even did any mixing to it, I was like, yes, this song is a go. I like this song. Yeah. And then Roller Coaster, because... I actually had on Switch when I did the track list. I actually had oh. we had I had we had that vibe as the outro. But when I listened to it, I'm like roller coaster definitely got more of that outro feel. Yeah, so. it definitely does. Like, cause it's kind of like wrapping up the entire, uh, like the whole thing that we just did. This 30 day album challenge was literally like a roller coaster. It really <laughs> like, was. It started off like woo. And then we kind of all got to that flat two part where we're like, okay, oh, oh shit, oh shit. And then the drop happened and we're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, when I first got that as the demo and like, it, um, I'm so bad with names. So I, I can see his name in my mind, but I can't figure out how to correlate it with my mouth. <sighs> uh, you talking about roller coaster? Yes. Uh, oh, roller coaster, man. his name is. R Riz, R A S. Oh, R A, y yeah, yes, Ra. Well, I Raz. was trying to pronounce it as Raz, but I don't know how he pronounces it. But you're gonna interview him anyway, so he can address that. <laughs> um, when I first heard like his chorus and his his verse on it, I was like, in the beat, I was like, oh, this is so good. Like, okay. And it didn't really, I thought it was going to take me longer to come up with a concept for it because I felt like when I was writing it, it needed to have a little bit more of like a singy rap to it. And I'm not really like a rapper. So trying out that kind of style was a little different for me. Like in some of my songs, I do have some faster parts that are more singy song that could be like a sing rap, but they're still very mel melodic in a way. 
Yeah. So like I kind of had to figure out like how was I gonna put that together, and then um, and then make it like good, you know, make it fit with the song and with the whole entire vibe. So that one was actually a bit of a challenge for me, but I love the way it came out. I love yeah. it. Like, like I think that yeah, like, maybe my one of my favorite songs on the whole album. I really do. No, like my favorite is still "We Got That Vibe." Like it's, that's always. <laughs> it's we like, got that vibe is a vibe. <laughs> like, like, I can't wait to, oh, I need a performance track for that so I could perform it at my showcase on the 21st. I just realized, like, I oh, got yeah, you. While, I, while I got you on here, can I get that? <laughs> I got you 100%. I would definitely send that over to you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, like, when I was uh, working with the trail, um, I did have a lot of good experiences. Plus, my favorite song that we did together is Me, Him, and DT702. And <laughs> it's called Breakdown. And the entire song is basically about like, you know, don't judge us while we're going through our stages. We're out here working, like our energy is contagious. Like these are like the lyrics that are in there basically. And it's just about you being on your grind and just putting everything into it and not caring about what other people are thinking. And then at the same time, like call, calling back to them in a way like, hey, you know what? Don't judge us. We're working. We're growing. We're trying to be the best that we could be. We're out here climbing to the top. We're not going to stop. Like this is what we're doing. Yeah. So it's like a, it's a complete summer bop. It's such an anthem. It's called Breakdown, and that one's on my YouTube too. So between Breakdown and we got, oops, don't go anywhere, phone. <laughs> between Breakdown and we got that vibe, I feel like those two are like my, my top. I love them songs, and like Natro and DT702 are featured on that song too, and oh, they sound so good. They just did a great job. So I like that I'm at this point where like I kind of get these opportunities to work with different producers now, like. When I saw you post that you were doing the 30 day album challenge and you were like asking the internet for permission, I was like, don't ask us for permission. Just do it. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, you know, so, you know what I think? I think you should do that. <laughs> so it was like one of those things like I would just ask it because I would think about doing it in March. And my whole thing is like I released two songs in January and two songs in February. But I was like, I need like one big project to work on. So I was like, you know what? Yeah. March 1st, I'm going to do an album in 30 days, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And then, so I just did that video putting it out there. And most of the time, nobody, like, really answered me back when I do videos like that. Because oh, those like, my worst so performing bad. videos on TikTok. But as soon as you seen it, you started reposting it and everything else. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. well, I'm guess I'm, I'm going to have to man. do it. And then it's, like, more people reaching out to me. So I'm like, well, I guess I have to start doing it now. I can't wait to March. <laughs> You got called out. Yes, like, you uh, put you yeah, put the you spotlight on me. Now. You called me out. You called me out, and I was like, yeah. pretty much, I got to do it. I have to. <laughs> yeah, and I'm really glad you did because if you didn't, I wouldn't have. We got that vibe, and ah, oh, I'm just, oh, I can't wait for the world to hear it. Like, I'm so excited. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, because like, um, after after my experience with that label, like, I went back out to do some finishing touches and we were supposed to have a hollywood release party and we were the three of us were going to bust to hollywood from vegas for the party and then i was just going to fly home and like the day before they texted us and they were like oh the party's canceled mind you we paid to be at that party which is something i feel like we shouldn't have had to do if it was like our release you know what i mean yeah. so sketchy sketchy right the hope it's the hope so um we were all three of us were just like what the hell just happened like okay so I came back from that and I found myself just like very depressed and unsure of what I wanted to do. And I didn't even know how to market all that on Facebook. Like I just kind of lost my oomph and I just couldn't even do justice to the music that I now had because I was so deflated and I just fell into this rut and I was like, fuck, I don't know what to do with my life now. Like, I don't know what to do. Um, I know that feeling. But that, <laughs> yeah. And then at that time, like I had like, I was just starting to live in South Carolina during the end of that. And so, like, I had transitioned to a whole new life, and things were just rough. And then I met a new man, and then moved to Florida to be with him. Actually, I'm sorry, when I met my new man, it was in Florida that that all ended. Like, I was going through all that while I was transitioning in life and moving. So it was a couple years worth of a process that I went through that. And then uh, I was still a dancer. I didn't want to be a dancer anymore, so I didn't know what to do. So I kind of stopped music for a minute and then went to school for massage therapy so I didn't have to be a stripper anymore. 
but while I was in school, I got recording equipment and then just kind of set myself up and was doing like uh, Friday uh, request songs from people. I started in my bathroom and then went into the recording part of it. And I had some minor YouTube success with that for a minute, but I couldn't keep up with it because school started to be demanding towards the end. I know that. And I was like, fuck. I'm like, all right, well, let me finish school and then I'll go back to that. I didn't go back to that because I met a band. Like, my buddy Keith came down. I went out to go hang out with him because my sister was really his friend first. And then she was down to visit. So I was going to visit her and hang out with them. Him and I clicked. He was playing the bass and the guitar. And I was like, oh, cool. Let's do some music. And he was like, yeah, I'd love to. Or I think he asked me. Either way, we started doing it. And then we developed an entire band. Like, we got our buddy Andy to play guitar, a friend of ours, Lawrence, to do the drums. We rented out a storage facility and practiced like every week for about a year. And we were doing like 80s to today, pop, rock, and like alternative type of music, plus originals that I had written on my keyboard that we fully developed. And it was amazing. And um, I have actual videos of those performances on my other YouTube, which is the Tabby and the Cat YouTube. It's complicated. <laughs> and I was going to ask you about that because <laughs> when you first reached out, and I go, I always check out everybody page once they reach out because yeah. I want to know exactly what they do and everything. And I seen that you had like a lot of band pictures and stuff like that, yeah. especially on uh, Instagram. And I was yeah, like, yeah. well, I think she's in the band. <laughs> well, I was. I, I was, think that... she's in the band. I'm not sure because <laughs> my wife always yeah. wanted to keep up with everybody I'm working with, and she always asked, "What well, do yeah. she have any music out?" Like, I think so, but I think she's more in a band. And then when I you was. dropped your song, um, "Invisible," yes, yeah, I like I that Invisible. song a lot too. And... Oh, it's got such a cool '80s EDM vibe. That's why I can't put myself in a box with a genre because it's like I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you on that. And I yeah. was like, I heard that song. I was like, okay, yes. And I think I heard that one after we got that vibe. Good, so yeah, you might have. Yes, <laughs> but yes, like, I well. did listen to it. I did. I did like the vibe of that one. Um. But, but yeah. the band, um, it, we were so, like, not to be, like, a toot toot, but, like, toot toot, we were really good for such a young band. But they were, you know, they're pretty professional players. And at that time, I had really developed my vocal skills to the point where I could sing whatever song you laid at my feet. I was going to make it my own because I had found my sound as an artist. So it didn't really matter where the song came from. I wasn't going to sing it the way that they were going to sing it. I was going to sing it the way that Tabby would sing the song if this was going to be Tabby's song. Gotcha. And um, and that's kind of where you need to get to as an artist. You need to kind of you start by mimicking just so you can produce sound and, and explore what your sound sounds like. And then you start to develop your techniques that you like, that are comfortable, that you're really good at. And then you start to push those boundaries further and further. Um, so anyway, I booked us, this was about almost seven to eight months ago, maybe like last October, maybe it might've been a year now that we've been broken up, but uh, I booked us our first couple of gigs because I was like, Hey, I think we're ready. And you know, the consensus was like, eh, maybe, maybe not, but I booked them anyway. And then everybody was like, Oh, cool. Except for my bassist, Keith, who's still my fanmate, uh, wasn't able to make it. So I was like, no worries. We'll figure it out. But he did say, I'm going to try to get the day off right now. I can't make it, but I'll try to get the day off because it was booked like literally the next week was going to be the show. Got you. So then my drummer, Lawrence at the time was like, oh, well, I'm not going to play without the bassist. And I'm like, I mean, I totally, I guess I wouldn't understand because I'm not a drummer. So maybe if that's how you feel, then okay, I'll figure it out. And of course, Andy and I have never played solo together. So there was no way we were going to pull that off in a week. So I was like determined to just prep a solo show anyway, because I didn't want to lose the ability to have that performance. Yeah. And then Keith got back to me and he was like, oh, I'm in. So then I tell Lawrence, the drummer, I'm like, okay, Keith's back in. So you're coming. And he goes, uh, I don't want to bring my vintage drum kit out. I'm like, why didn't you say that in the first place? I've been talking to you for months now about trying to book gigs. And you could have said at any point in time, hey, if you're going to book a gig, I don't want to move my drum kit. Can you get another drum kit? Or you could have done it for yourself. And now you're going to tell me two days before the show after you just told me the only reason you're not going to come is because the bassist won't be there. But mm. now all of a sudden it's, I don't want to move my drum kit. 
come on, man. What the hell? He was just trying to make excuses. And it's one of those things that I think all of us as artists do. When we start seeing a little bit of success or we start moving forward yeah. a little bit, we always got that little bit of doubt and that little bit of hesitation in us. Ooh, you know, I, I, I understand that. I felt that before. So I truly understand that. Yeah, it was hard. And then I had to make a hard decision. I was like, well, if we really want to move forward and be successful, we can't operate like that. And I'm like, we need a new drummer because I already knew working with Lawrence that talking to him, because I've had to talk to him about other things before, was not going to solve the problem. Like he had other things going on with him that I couldn't help those things. And they were going to come into the dynamic and it could potentially ruin the chances that we have of going further. So I was like, hey, we need to do a new band, our new drummer. And then, you know, Andy didn't feel comfortable with that, which I respect that he was honest with me about that, that he didn't feel comfortable starting over and then trying to do a show in four weeks time and not feeling comfortable mm. enough that we could pull it off. But I just had such a strong belief in his skill and in our skills collectively that we were going to be fine, but he wasn't comfortable with it. So he was like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to do that. And I was like, you know what? I respect that you know yourself well enough enough to be able to tell me that instead of like, going through with it and then the show time comes and you're like oh never mind you know so like i have mad respect for him for being that honest with me and telling me how he actually feels so um i got another person uh, my friend jeff uh to come in and be guitar and back us up and it was me jeff and keith that did the second show and then the second show never paid us so mm. so of course jeff after that was like yeah i'm not playing with you guys totally understand that like i wouldn't play either if i didn't get paid after i put four weeks worth of work in to do a show that i didn't even see money from so uh so after that i was like i'm gonna need some time i'm gonna work on some solo stuff in between all that i was already doing demo work so like demo work basically is i would get people in my inbox they would send me a song and they'd say hey can you produce this into a demo demo like it'd be a sound of like a beat or something and somebody who either can sing but just they're not very polished or somebody who can't sing, but they're a writer and they're trying to try to show you just what the idea yeah, is to you. give you a concept. So then I was getting paid to develop those concepts and they were either going to pitch them to other higher artists in the industry who had a following who could take the song somewhere that I couldn't because I didn't have that. Or they were going to take them as full productions and just strictly only do sync placing with it. And then um, I never know what would happen with those songs. And most of them were like, eh, anyway, like they weren't really part of my vibe or something that I would put out as a solo project anyway. So I was more than happy to just take the fee and then you go do whatever you're doing with it, whatever you feel like you need to do with your song. Uh, here's your demo. Except for Invisible. Invisible was the first demo that I got that I really connected with on like the message and the whole song. So, oh God, I'm getting emotional. That's so weird. Ugh, <laughs> no, stop that. <laughs> Um, and so I had negotiated with them and said, Hey, you know, I know I don't have like a whole substantial, a lot behind me, but I'm willing to put some work in to make this release as successful as it can. And I'm willing to continue to promote it throughout the longevity of my career, wherever that goes, because I love this message and I love this song so much. And I would like it to be a solo project that I can release. And they agreed. So then I was able to release something that I really loved and felt passionate about. So that was like awesome. And now here I am with you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I, I, I want to do similar things. And that's one reason why I'm always like looking to do collabs like this and everything and really working with different artists, because this is not the first time I did it. Did The first time I no? actually did it was you. I remember earlier you was talking about when you would feel down, defeated and everything. I'm going to tell you about my mm -hmm. moment real quick because we got to wrap this up. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> my moment was about seven, eight years ago when I first did this for the first time where I was got a whole bunch of rappers from Instagram and SoundCloud and we released oh, okay. our album on SoundCloud. I released it on my birthday. I remember it. I was excited for it. I released it on my birthday. I went to work. I came home. And my computer didn't turn on. I was like, okay, the battery's dead. So I charged it up. Next day, it still wouldn't turn on. Come to find out the whole motherboard was burnt in it. The motherboard was no good no more. Um, So, yes, I didn't oh, have it. Did you lose everything? Yes. I still got the hard drive, thankfully, but I haven't tried to get anything off the hard drive yet. No, so, that's devastation right yes. there. Like, even when you have the hard drive, it's devastating to go through that. You need time to process that emotionally. Yeah, so I took like, 
And it's funny because anytime I try to quit music, it always finds its way back to me. And this always. is one of those moments where I stopped doing music for a while. I worked in Amazon pharmacy and I always talk about, I'm a music producer. That's always anybody asks me, what do I do for a living? I'm a music producer. It don't matter what job I yeah. got. So I'm an artist. I'm saying, yes. <laughs> so I'm in there and one of my coworkers was like, Oh, you got a computer and a microphone and everything. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I got that. And she was like, well, I buy it for you for my boyfriend. Cause he rap. And I was like, no, mm -hmm. no, uh, uh, no, I am not selling none of my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> your heart was like what the hell are you doing unique no that's your baby don't do that i was like no and she was like yeah my boyfriend told me that i was like listen i would come over there and i would record you but i'm I'm not selling none of my stuff <laughs> that's how you do it though so listen i got the experience to record you and produce you but i can't just sell you my equipment like i'm sorry that's like a part of your soul that you're just like selling to somebody <laughs> Ooh, that's no you made the right choice you really did because you're like you're very gifted at what you do so thank you um i mean i was just happy to be on it like i i didn't know if you were even going to be down for it or not i was like well i'm just going to encourage him to do it because whoever he puts on it i'm still going to listen to the album anyway even if it's not me but i'm very happy that you gave me a chance and you're like all right here you go <laughs> yes and i i sent elena over to you because i i found elena on tiktok and i just loved her content and her voice and i just i just knew she would kill it if she was oh, she did an incredible job an incredible job yeah she, she wasn't sure if she could because she's like well i haven't released anything on 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 the platform yet i'm about to but i haven't yet i'm like we'll figure it out like you're just too good not to give this opportunity to like sometimes people get opportunities because they're just really really good at what they're doing and then other times some people get opportunities just because they're lucky yeah so uh, like i said if you show up if you get opportunities for showing up 95 percent of the time just for showing yeah. up you could be showing the worst here. person there but because you show <laughs> up and everybody get to know you because you're showing up all the time exactly <laughs> and that's what matters yeah. like if you're really about something you're gonna put your time and energy into it you're gonna invest in it you're gonna take opportunities even if they don't look like they're the right ones or they seem like a scam because every opportunity that you do whether it's good for you or not always benefits you in your experience with working through this industry and through the network and you don't know who you're going to meet or what the connections are going to do for you or how they're going to help you so like i'm hosting a showcase on the 21st and like it's um it's like a ticket ticket based sales showcase so like you, you pay for your slot on stage and you sell your tickets and you make your money back on your ticket sales it's designed specifically for underground artists like myself who've gone through this before like i did this with bridging the music and from that opportunity i was booked at a showcase because now or i was booked at a, a bar because i had footage and i had more of a resume like oh i did this performance i did this show i did showtime in stanford same thing i pay for a slot on stage i bring people in and then they're all gonna like scream and chant to make the sound meter loud enough for me to win the 500 dollars at the end of the competition yeah. so I developed a similar showcase that's way cheaper and offers way more perks. And then I'm reaching out to people really excited to have, like thinking that artists like me are gonna see the value in it. And the world has been so duped in scams that people are like, oh, I don't think it's legit. Oh no, I'm not, I wouldn't do pay to pay. That's a, that's a waste of my time and money. I'm like, oh, so you must be really big already then, huh? Yes. Like you must be getting booked left and right and getting paid a lot of money now, huh? I bet if I looked at your socials, it would tell me a different story. And then I naively did reach out to people who were already past that level because I didn't understand, this is my first time going through it, that like there are levels to this. And as you're leveling up, certain opportunities are for you and other opportunities aren't for you. So I learned a lot about like the demographic of people I was trying to reach out to because I found that I was really passionate about wanting to give a space and a platform to help artists who are in the position I was in. Cause I struggled so much and I learned so much and I have so much to offer in terms of just knowledge and value. And I've been putting events together like this for a long time and didn't realize that that was a skill set that I had and I was completely capable. And then, um, through this experience, putting together the showcase, I actually got a job with city limits working as their event coordinator because of my oh, tenacity congratulations. and the way that I, I know I'm, <laughs> I can't, sometimes I'm just like, wait a minute, what, what happened? What'd you do? What, what happened now? Pinch, pinch. Um, <laughs> And I was so excited to help um, help the owner like build these future events because they are going to be so awesome. Like we're doing a reggae fest on 420, and it's coming up soon. I've had, I've had to put a lot of work on the back end to like get the vendors and everything together for it. And 
but he's got a really good team to work with. So now I get to work with this really awesome team and get this whole other experience in the music industry that I've never had before. And it all just piggybacks. Like I'll get time on stage to still perform, to still promote my music, to still promote me as an artist, but then I'll get this business experience and this event experience as well. And then I have a platform to utilize to help underground artists come up the same, like the same way. Like this is, these are the steps that you've got to be willing to take. And if you're not willing to take them, it's okay. Maybe this isn't for you. There's other avenues. Like it's not really a one path fits all type of thing when you're in the industry. There's so many avenues to take that as an artist, you have to discover which one is the one that you're, that's going to get you to your goal. Like what is your goal and how are you going to get there? And what are the steps in between that are going to take you there? Oh yeah. Me and you relate on so many different levels. So <laughs> I know. I definitely feel you and I'm definitely going to be in touch with you. Uh, we got to wrap okay. it up in the next two minutes. So anything you want to let anybody else know, anything you want to promote before we jump off? Uh, of here? I mean, city limits, uh, rising indie artist takeover is on April 21st in Deland, uh, 7 to 11 PM. Uh, my song invisible is out. Uh, we got that vibe is coming out at the end of the month. I've got a catalog of music that you've inspired me to dig back in through and reproduce that I've got to work on in during this year because I'm like, you know what? There's no reason any of that should sit there. Just get that shit out there. Just just put it out there. See what happens. And if you need help, I'm here. I'm down to help. <laughs> okay. Good. I might I might need you. Uh, because Elena and I were talking about I have a song smooth that I want to do and I sent her the beat for it. But she wanted to take a crack at making the beat because she's actually a pretty nifty little producer herself and i'm all like girl power go for it like have at it girl but i had another artist reach out they wanted to do a collab and i had another track that i felt like he was appropriate to fit on so i think when i get the vocals back from him i might send those to you and be like hey what can you do with can you sprinkle this a little <laughs> unique fairy dust on that <laughs> i got you but let me go ahead and wrap this up real quick yeah yeah yeah, yeah. thank y'all for tuning in that was another one live in the studio we had tabby on Ooh. Her socials and everything should be down in the description. If it's not, I will be adding them shortly.